guys. Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. As we wrap up uh, the news stories, everybody's kind of writing a summary of 2022 and what they think is going to come for 2023. So I decided, hey, uh, as I was looking through the news, very few news stories today, I said, let's talk about Hollywood and how they're basically collapsing. Uh, I came up with this, obviously, after reading a story that's talking about how Hollywood is collapsing. And I think it's a good thing. I think... Um, you know, when you look at this country and you look at the world, there's left versus right, men versus women. You've got all the social, social and economic um, groups out there. And Hollywood has decided they're going to stay on the left, firmly on the left side. They're going to stay a very anti-male, very anti-straight, very, uh, uh, very much in their in their own little bubble. And they're starting to pay for it. And this is why I always say, you know, when you cut too many people out of your audience, so to speak, you're going to, you're going to get punished for it. And people are talking with their dollars. Not only uh, this, but the economy is doing so poorly right now. People are having to make some tough choices with what they're going to do with their money. And it will continue. Uh, the era of free money has gone away and you're going to, you're going to see it in Hollywood. And, and this uh, quote that I found by Archbishop Charles J. Chaput puts it very well. Evil preaches tolerance until it is dominant, and then it tries to silence good. At this point in time now, we've got Hollywood and media and everybody else coming out with the, the man-bad narrative that even channels like mine, I've never really said. I mean, I make fun of women occasionally that are doing bad or have high body counts or making themselves unattractive to men, but I've never come out and said I, I dislike women or I hate women. I want women to improve. I want them to improve to the point where men want them again and marriages can happen, and happy relationships can happen, but none of that is happening. And now, just coming out and saying, hey, you know what? Like, there's nothing wrong with being white, or there's nothing wrong with being straight, or there's nothing wrong with being a man. Just saying those things can get you the the stink eye from, from Hollywood and the media. So we're gonna, I, I got a bunch of headlines I'm gonna read down through, and then I'll, I'll have a nice summary story here at the end. This comes from Breitbart. Hollywood lost more than 500 a billion, that's with a B, gang, market value in 2022. So imagine making 500 Avatar 2s and no one shows up to watch them, 500 of them. That's a lot of money. And, that, and this is a good thing, again, because Hollywood has gone woke. They say uh, for Hollywood, 2022 was truly an uh, honest horribilis. I guess they're going with Latin there. Major studios, streamers, cable providers, and other media giants lost a combined $542 billion in market value in 2022 with left-wing studios, with left-wing studios, the Walt Disney Company, Netflix, and Comcast counting for the bulk of the bloodshed. The losses outpaced indices for other sectors, including banking, which saw a 14.5% uh, drop, and telecommunications, which fell by 11 so what they're saying here is, yeah, stocks have fallen off. You know, banking's falling off, fallen off 15%. Telecommunications fell off 11%, but 40% for Hollywood and the media companies, which is, you know, two to three times more, uh, almost four times more than telecommunications. Um, so here's a, a quick summary of every, because it's easy to forget a lot of these things. Morbius flops uh, because it was poorly written and it, it didn't execute. Uh, Jurassic World dominant, worst in the franchise history. Uh, Black Adams flops to potential $100 million loss. Identity is not character. And again, these aren't necessarily against, all these movies aren't necessarily against men, but these are where the people they're hiring, the people that they want to fill their ranks and their roles are a diversity and inclusion and all this other stuff. And they're strong, empowered females, and they're showing up without any qualifications, without any skill. And what's happening is you're seeing it in the writing of these movies, in the production values, in the CGI, in everything. When you stop hiring those that can do and you hire based on external uh, characteristics, this is what you get. Uh, we'll can continue down through. Uh, Moon Knight is the worst reviewed Disney plus Marvel series so far. And that was early this year. It got worse after that. Halo joins the ranks of failed video game adaptions. Uh, bankrupt bankruptcy for Disney Plus, a new Marvel series becomes a flop. And that was Ms. Marvel that nobody watched. Again, because it was stunning and brave. Thor, Love and Thunder falls hard at the box office. Um, painful to watch. Viewers hate Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, which critics insist is another example of the isms. 
So it's when you, even though, even though how uh, the the new uh, Game of Thrones is doing fine and they have lots of diversity and it's doing fine, why? It was well written. And so when people see headlines like this, this is a company saying, you know what, we're going to attack you back because you're not liking the garbage we're putting out. But but then again, when you bring up something like House of Thrones and you say, well, why is this one doing good? This has diversity in it. People are kind of like uh, moving along. We don't want to talk about that. Uh, and this is from the things, the rings of power may end up being the most expensive disaster ever made. Uh, they say with advertising and marketing and everything and uh, for the the rights licensing fees for Lord of the Ring, it costs almost $90 million per episode. And it was trashed by pretty much everybody except those in the in the uh, the industry that are the shill writers. And they, uh, yeah, they say here, it makes it the most expensive show ever. Woke failed. Disney lost $123 billion in market value in 2022. As shares dropped 44%, worst year since 1974. And again, remember, I just covered on that other article where telecoms and banking industries and other industries have fallen 10 to 15%. Disney's three times, three to almost five times that, four times that, because they they decided to hop on one aisle of the political spectrum and the man-hating and the LGHD TV, and, and they got into politics, and people are now voting with their dollar. And and this is and if it continues, these companies are either going to have to turn around, or or they're going to lose their shirts, and eventually will fail. Which I, again I think is a good thing. And another counter to the narrative here from Screen Rant: Top Gun Maverick officially ends 2022 as the number one movie at the box office. It held off uh, uh, Avatar: The Way of Water and Jurassic World. And and what did we have in this movie? We had a female pilot. I think we had a couple of minority pilots. They were included. They were treated no worse or any different than any other. But what you had here is a, a man being being portrayed as brave, strong, smart, capable, a good story. It didn't it didn't wander off into the weeds with any any messages of any any type. And when people go to the movies, they want to be entertained. They don't want this stuff jam down their throats. It's one of the reasons why I, I try not, not to get too heavy into politics because I hate all of them. And you guys don't need to know that and hear me rant all day long on how I hate big government. You come here to just kind of get a little bit of entertainment and information. And, and Top Gun did that and it won. It's going to be a huge success. And Hollywood either needs to, to learn the lesson of, hey, you know what? We need to portray men. We need to portray uh, people and the world the way it is. And we can we can include various things and various causes and things like that without making the central point of the story, without bashing on men and without saying, oh, look at this, we've got the first, you know, uh, a black LGHD TV transitioning uh, a deaf midget. Like that, that, and I know they're little person, but my, my point being, that, that they keep trying to drive the wedge further and further in. And even the people that are on board with this stuff are like, yeah, but the, the TV show's boring. There's nothing here for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish it off with this story here. This is from the American Spectator. The collapse of Netflix is the collapse of Hollywood. And, and this is a few months old, but it still rings very true. And it may even be uh, uh, more apropos now. So I'll leave it up with this article. And then for those, those of us on Locals and YouTube, I have more to talk about after this. So make sure, or excuse me, for those of us on Locals, hang around. I have more to talk about. For those of you on YouTube, you can join me over there if you want to see the rest of the story that I don't put here on YouTube anymore. They say there's a YouTube video which, which might interest you. It's four years old and it's picked up over 51 million views in that time. It's probably deserves 10, time that, 10 times that much attention. The video is an interview between Helen Lewis of The Atlantic and British GQ and the renowned, if controversial, uh, psychiatrist, philosopher, author, and speaker, Jordan Peterson. It's precisely what you expected to be an hour and 42 minutes of Lewis, an ob obnoxious socialist who struggles to see anything from outside of her third wave feminism prism she's trapped in, attempting to insult and slur Peterson over his views and getting getting repeatedly run over for the effort. You're saying you've done your research and women are unhappy dominating men. I didn't say they were unhappy dominating men. You're saying that is so untrue. You're saying it's because women are too afraid to trust <laughs> parents. You're saying that women aren't intelligent enough. No, I'm not saying that. You're saying that's patently absurd. But you're saying 
Peterson argues in the video about six and a half minutes in that the fundamental basics of the so-called patriarchal structure of Western civilization is not power, it's competence. It doesn't matter what your race or sex is. It matters if you're any good at your job. The woke simply disregard competence and whine about identity because it is their route to power, which they do not care or which they do care about. Competence is held in very, very poor esteem by the ruling class in America and elsewhere in the modern West. Nowhere is that more evident than in the entertainment media industry, which like many other economic sectors, which have come to be dominated by woke people who, like Lewis, mistake competence for power and vice versa, is falling apart. This is something that I've talked about many times, and many of you in the comments have said the same thing to me, where you say, hey, I'm an engineer, I work at X X company, or I'm an electrical guy, or I'm this guy, and I'm this guy, and they have some woman that comes in, and she's now our manager, but she's never worked in the field, just because she has a degree in something, and she doesn't know what she's doing, or she's incompetent, or she doesn't understand how things are going. And many guys, when they're put as a as a worker or a subordinate of that manager, will get fed up and leave for another company. And what you end up doing is you consolidate, not the power, you don't consolidate the power, you consolidate the the knowledge, the competence. You, You consolidate all of that into different pockets throughout the world. And what happens is if you're going along with these identities, it's, it's not that the identity, the identity part portion of it is the bad part. It is, I mean, judging anyone on their immutable characteristics is awful but it's the part that you're now hiring for those characteristics instead of competency. And ultimately what that will do is it'll leave a lot of qualified men out of work and a lot of incompetent people that's gonna fill them with those people. And what happens? The military falls apart, which we're seeing. The government falls apart, the medical system. And of course, Disney stock is also cratering and Disney Plus streaming service has lost some 130,000 subscribers. Netflix is as terminally woke as Disney, but Netflix swims in the same polluted sea and Netflix's management and creative acquisitions teams aren't interested in competence. They're interested in power. In today's entertainment media industry, this means wokeness. If you're not woke, you've got to fight the power and you're going to struggle badly to sign top directors, actors, and others to take projects. So you go with the flow, but woke makes terrible, terrible art. Nobody wants to watch. The Academy might have liked power of the dog. Most Netflix subscribers agree with Sam Elliott and that it's it's crap. The Ozark finale comes next week and Ozark has been at least above average. And they also did the um, uh, the Korean thing there uh, and, and it's escaping me. I know you, you 400 of you will post in the comments. Don't post, it's okay. Uh, it's it's the, the game show thing where they ended you if, if you failed. I don't know why it's escaped my head. I watched it. It was really good. Um, and, and, and it was enjoyable. And when they put out these products that don't focus on the wokeness and the message and the narrative, there's actually a cohesive story in the center. And then you can sprinkle your little, whatever identities on the surface. And if the overall product is good, we don't care. You know, uh, we watched, uh, on, on New Year's Eve, we, we watched Lethal Weapon and, uh, Murtaugh, who's like, a, I think he was a sergeant. He's getting close to retirement. He's the kind of the boss, you know, he's in charge of the two, the two partners, which is Mel Gibson. You got, you got a, a powerful, you know, black guy. Had you switched that to a woman, the, the movie wouldn't have worked, but you can have women scattered in. And the other one we watched, uh, alien I, or no aliens, plural, the second alien. Um, you know, you've got the, the female Marine there who's very butch and masculine. And obviously it looks like she likes other women, but the point is, You've got stunning, brave, and strong, but it's only a little tiny segment of the movie or one part of a character's arc. It's not central to the story where you pause action and you pause a story to touch on something that nobody cares about. Nobody cares whether she's straight or not or who she's in love. It has nothing to do with anything. And the original aliens left it that way. They said, no, no, we're, we're going to make this character. We, we'll have a little bit of... of a representation of this character, but it has nothing to do with the story. So we're not going to wander down that path. We're not going to touch on it. And that's why most of the time when you watch the movie, and I've watched it since I was a kid, I never thought stunning and brave. I never thought, oh, I wonder if she dates women or I wonder if she's into, we don't care because it's not part of the story. But now were were they to rewrite this, 
they would show her grabbing an, another strong and powerful woman and them making out for three minutes and expressing their love and how they can't wait to get home to their, their daughter that they adopted. And, you, that, and that's what's happening to Hollywood is it's becomes too much agenda and not enough competent story writing. And people can tell. So I thought I'd do this summary. Um, they've lost 500, what they said, $538 billion in this industry in one year. Good movies like Maverick do well and are money earners and almost everything else that had a narrative failed and Hollywood is failing. And this is a win. For 2023, I'll tell you something, keep voting with your dollar. If you see an ad for your favorite ice cream or your favorite snack or your favorite company and they've gone woke and you do, and, and it seems like you do not resonate with this company, their message, what they stand for, or they come out with something that's against men like Gillette did, just remember it. And even if that's your favorite, whatever, look for alternatives. Find ways to not spend your money with them anymore. Punish them forever. If you start thinking like that, men have a lot of money. We have a lot of say. and We don't even have to open our mouths to say anything. Just watch where you spend your money and make it count and make these companies either go bankrupt or change their tunes. That's how men can change society without ever getting into conflict, without ever, you know, without ever having to go to a voting box is you use your wallet. And, and I think that's how we'll, we'll, we'll get everything wrapped around. Guys, I'll, I'll leave it there for those of you on YouTube. Uh, join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com where we will continue our discussion of the madness. Mm -hmm.